Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you. And I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very privileged and happy to be part of these sessions. And these moments are wonderful moments, rememberable moments. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm always thrilled and excited to um, you know, take part in these kind of sessions. And the reason is very simple that we talk about the Creator, the Creator, Yahweh, and His only Son, Jesus, who was sent to this earth, who laid His life as sin offering on the cross, shedding His precious blood. Why it is precious blood? There was no blemish in that blood. All of us are human beings, and we have Adamic sin in our blood. And how much ever you strive hard to sanctify your blood through your deeds, through your righteousness, you are not able to do it. Why? Because all of our deeds or <laughs> according to you, it's righteous deeds. But according to God, all of your righteous deeds are filthy rags. It was only one man who could live his life righteously. And whoever shall follow his footprints in his holy name. Yeah. The remission of sins takes place. And you are called as righteous because of his sacrifices on the cross. You see. see if somebody is telling you, yeah, 10 years you can go for a holiday. And 10th year you come and you attend a class for six months and you are going to be given the graduation as 10th grade. But the thing is, you will have two advantages. One is you would enjoy your life for nine and a half months. You go play in any mountain and come back. And number two, you are not losing on education either because they have a very secured and intellectual system that will cover every single thing that had been taught in the world for nine and a half years in that six months, which means you don't miss on your education. You don't miss on your graduation. You don't miss on your intellectuals. You don't miss on your knowledge. And plus, you get your nine and a half months for free to enjoy your life. Which one would want to still continue? No, no, I will go to school every day. You go, I won't go. <laughs> I will go and enjoy my life for nine and a half years and come back and learn. This is called as the curriculum that Bible teaches. It's not a shortcut. Uh, Bible doesn't ask you to be a compromiser. But Bible says, hey, you don't have to press hard, strive hard like a Pharisee. Who says that three times I fasted and that's why I'm righteous. <laughs> you don't have to strive. I mean, I'm taking it as an example, right? Please fast and pray because except by fasting and prayer, you're not able to fight against some of the evil spirits. The Bible says that. So I'm just telling you this as, an, as examples, layman examples. So Bible promises you an easy path. It's not a shortcut. Huh? You're, you're not asked to be a complacent person or a compromiser, not like that. But Bible gives you an easy path through which you are able to accrue and you are able to acquire, um, you know, all that people are earning through hard ways, yet they don't reach the mark, yet they don't reach their destiny. But you take an easy path and you are easily able to reach the destiny and the name of the path is called as Jesus pathway. In the name of Jesus, there is remission of sins. There is salvation that is promised. Yeah, there is redemption, there is deliverance, there is forgiveness for the sins of your past. And the bondage of sins will come near to you no more. And you are freed from the bondage, you are liberalized. And therefore, you are able to live that secure life, live that life with no blemish, spotless life. Yeah. How many of you are excited to live a life like this? Then come to Jesus. You're welcome. Right. And to some of the unbelievers who are listening to me, Hey, never think these are, you know, Bible-based teachings as religious convictions. Why I say this is because Jesus loves you too. And Jesus died for you too. His blood he had shed for you too. If somebody is telling you, Jesus, no, he died for Christians. You know, when this Christianity itself was commemorated, it is 350 years after Jesus was, uh, you know, dead and, uh, dead and gone. Means he, he, he still lives as our intercessor. He's resurrected. Yeah. Then how can you say that Jesus died for Christians? Christianity itself was recognized as a religion only 350 years later by King Constantine. That is his story. So does that one evidence not fulfill or answer this question that Jesus did not die only for Christians but for entire world? Because he looks at you as his own brother, as his own sister. He is your creator. Father Yahweh is your creator. Therefore, everything that we are teaching is about the way to live your life because this is not a religious book. This is a book of life based on which whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, you will be judged in the white throne judgment 
you may belong to any religion any doctrine but please mark my words yeah you will hate me because you think i am talking as a christian and preaching religion no we are not preaching religion neither christianity we are preaching the book of life and we are telling you the truth what will happen in that life after death and about eternity and about white throne judgment and how you will be asked to settle your accounts for all the deeds that includes you rejecting jesus on what basis you rejected jesus who created you who died for you what will you answer my non christian brother my non christian sister right all right a warm welcome to this new episode this is episode number 6 where we are talking about this agape love of god agape love of god is unconditional unimaginable immeasurable irrevocable unchangeable unmistakable i can go on and on with so many things you know it's beyond what your imaginations is all about it's beyond what you have heard you can't even imagine and one thing justifies all these terms that i had basically explained yeah that i've called of so many terms right unimaginable and all that it can be encompassed under one word that's jesus because while at we were sinners god sent his only son to be laid as sacrifice on the cross and jesus accepted it gladly and he died for you and me and he never gave up any of us to the devil to the demons and jesus had all the patience in the world to die for every mankind and that's the beauty of these sessions that we are discussing for a very long time and uh, in the past five episodes we have spoken through various attributes attributes such as talking about the agape love of god attributes such as uh, talking about the you know the love and marriage and on the same lines we are going to talk about a very interesting subject an important subject pray for your enemies or in other words learn to love your enemies as you love yourself jesus left behind a very very important commandment in matthew 20 to 39 love your neighbor as yourself and how you are able to do it and i will tell you what none of the religious doctrines that exist on planet earth teaches a doctrine like this that you need to love your neighbor you need to pray for those who hate you you need to bless those who persecute you you need to uh you know uh you know uh what to say bless bless those who have spitefully used you all those things you will read only in the bible and these are the teachings which are very very tough to follow many people have asked these questions um how is it possible to basically be a person like this and this is how you know jesus lived his life and that's why it's important to pay attention to jesus lifestyle and jesus teachings and preachings and therefore you are able to get there to that level yeah to many people um this forgiveness they don't even know the meaning they think sorry simply means i have forgiven no sorry you have not even forgiven you have apologized from a worldly standard perspective right the world has taught taught us nature has taught us in the sense i would say your education has taught us i taught you um, to thank others and you know ask sorry but i don't think you forgave them from your heart you did not let go of that bitter experience uh, from your mind and heart it still lingers pretty much to your thoughts and that is where you know the bible is going to help you uh, how you could basically you know turn things upside down and that is what we are going to discuss in this series i do not know how many sessions will be there maybe seven eight sessions maybe less than 10 but doesn't matter i'm going to take you through few scriptures in the bible and we are going to deal with that in detail therefore you have a fair understanding of how this doctrine works in its entirety you know it's very important to understand it not only helps you to build a very very strong married life uh, very good you know builds you as a very good parents builds you as a very good children uh, builds you as a very good uh, you know mother in law or father in law daughter in law son in law or you builds you as a very good employee you are a blessing to all the people at workplace builds you as a very good citizen of your own country yeah builds you as a very good person who will also pray for your neighborhood and your neighbor will be very very happy when i vacated my house one of my neighbors almost started to weep 
I will miss you so much. Yeah, or is your neighbor thinking the other way around? Up, my God, the guy is gone. What a demon he was. <laughs> Why? Because you did not follow this doctrine called as law of forgiveness. You know, or love your enemies. We are going to discuss thoroughly. Are you all ready? So one more aspect also I would like to cover before we get into some of the phrases or scriptures. You know, why is forgiving becoming so so difficult? Not only for some people, but most of us, right? We discussed a little bit on those uh, lines uh, from a different uh, paraphrase um, in one another series. It's about that looking down attitude. The looking down attitude is the one which doesn't doesn't allow. most of us to forgive others what is this looking down attitude means looking down attitude simply means that you think you are standing at an elevated position by all means and all by all standards by physical standards yeah maybe you're good looking professional standards maybe you're well educated you're well cultured you're a literate huh? you're a phd materialistic standards you're a rich person probably you got your own flat or property and your own car and uh, by public standards or social standards you are well placed in a company you have a very good job which which fetches you handful of money or bag full of money probably <laughs> you're a politician or a businessman who is not paying taxes yeah obviously suitcases full of money so what happens is naturally you have that prejudice you have that kind of um uh, what is the right word to use is uh, you're puffed up you're puffed up uh, by all means uh, look at my social status look at my public status look at my property look at my net worth bank balance look at my uh, car look at my suit look at my wife look at my child look at my dress this and that so what happens a brother or sister believer or unbeliever doesn't matter when they approach you your 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 mind is basically scanning them by these standards and therefore implicitly you are approving that uh, they don't deserve for my attention they don't deserve for my respect they don't deserve for everything um, you know that that uh, that is expected but then when you approve of a person of your same standard or maybe more than you a richer person than you and obviously what happens is you will start looking down on yourself isn't it you get that inferiority complex and you are you are very careful in what you talk your the words of your mouth and your conduct before that person and uh, your behavior mannerism everything changes one overnight changes you understand this is the look looking down attitude and what happens when that brother or sister who is far way below than your standards or your position uh, tells you anything you either get offended or very defensive or don't care about it you're you're reluctant you're negligent you're reluctant saying that you know well let me think about it or talk to my pa or get an appointment let me think about it and you will ensure that he doesn't get an appointment because you would have informed your pa hey don't give an appointment to that fellow i don't talk to such people isn't it so you have this and you know what these days the culture is also teaching us that way right we don't gel with people of the lower cadre and and that's where you see the uh, the social media is getting very powerful to unite people of the same levels same religion same gender men have a community women have a community lesbians have a community gays have a community all those groups you will see evolving uh, beyond measures beyond our imaginations beyond the limits and the reason is because of this look down looking down attitude and doesn't go well therefore what happens is all the guys who are belonging to the same level same culture same stature same nature same expectation same degree same graduation huh? and the same uh, social status or public status or professional status they all join hands and they all become one group and they and, and it's it's all about groupism nowadays like the the fights are not between individuals very rarely you can see this the fights are between groups nowadays yeah look at my group and they they always associate themselves with a community because if if somebody is touching you there are another 10 guys supporting you likewise that guy also will not come alone 
that way that's why you see a lot of gang wars and social media wars <laughs> yeah one hashtag fighting with another hashtag i never been part of any hashtags so i don't like to garbage and waste my time garbage my uh, my bad mouthing and waste my time i've never been there and will never be there either i don't know where in the world people get time for all this right to teach bible and take care of my work and life and i'm a part time minister i don't have time for anything almost don't have time even to talk some of my closest friends or very close relatives you know sometimes you know i'm highly strongly burdened in my heart to preach and teach bible in the limited time that i have on on this earth i'm a tenant in this earth you know and i do not know when i would be asked to come and by my place my permanent place uh, are nothing but the man- mansions that are being built in the kingdom of heaven by my lord jesus john 14 1 2 and 3 and that is my permanent place and i belong there not here so every minute that i spend here is important why because i will also be judged on my deeds and i need to settle these accounts on the white throne judgment day and it's very important that i use my time judiciously yeah and very carefully as for every idle word that proceeds of my mouth means what wasting your time involving in gossips murmuring and grumbling and complaining and all these things and you know when all of these evolves when you are not able to let go something of someone when you get into some sort of uh, strives and grudges bitter envy what triggers you because of your comp- competing attitude or because of your immaturity or because you are too much involved in the worldly pleasures and world worldly matters you get in there and any of these things which i have listed down you want to read more of these take and read second corinthians sorry second timothy 3 1 to 9 colossians 3 5 to 9 mark 7 21 to 23 1 corinthians 6 9 and 10 1 timothy 1 9 and 10 and galatians 5 17 to 21 and uh, one uh, romans chapter 1 29 to 32 romans 6 13 to 20 ephesians 4 31 if you read all of these scriptural ver- verses you will discover there are at least 50 to different 50 to 60 different types of sinful deeds being listed there and all of them are that the source is nothing but unforgiving nature right you lack in kindness gentleness and all the fruit of the spirit that is uh, defined right fruit of the spirit nine flavors being compassionate patient enough and uh, long suffering attitude you you lack in any of these or all of these the reason is because you are not forgiving in nature why because in this world when we travel across the ends of the earth you will some or other ways by some or other means discover that no one is perfect and you know what is that something you forget you are also part of that imperfect category nobody is perfect we all have fallen short of glory and the very reason we start look down looking down on others is one aspect i told already that because you compare your social status and the other other aspect is even within the same community you will still start uh, finding loopholes and people are you telling me if uh, in for example you belong to a group of 100 people all of the same category right they are rich, rich like you they are wealthy like you they are healthy like you they are they are like you you don't go well with all 100 don't you right you pick hand pick one or two people and then the remaining 97 you will be gossiping along with those two why because you will find some or other imperfect imperfection in them and this is called as do not look at the speck in your brother's eyes but look at the speck in your own eyes which means what you all you also have shortcomings we all have shortcomings and we don't look at ourselves and that's where bible says we all have fallen short of glory before the throne of grace you just plug in the name of jesus between you and the other brother between whom there is a rift or revenging or avenging or defense or offense or some kind of problems right you don't go well with each other just put the name of jesus in between two of you and both of you would would understand that neither of you are perfect enough to blame each other because why you both have fallen short of glory before the name of jesus we are all equal under the throne of grace we are equally sinners we are equally disqualifying we are equally have fall, we are equally have fallen short of glory and uh, i can think of so many reasons as why you shouldn't be fighting with each other Now what makes you to fight with each other because you are not letting go certain things okay another category of people is i want to spend some more time in you know setting the basics another category of people that i could think is they enjoy they enjoy carrying the load of garbage what is this load of garbage you know brother what this fellow had done 20 years ago 
he insulted me in front of 10 people and i will tell you what when you go and enquire those 10 people you will find half of them are dead and gone the rest half of them are not even having memory that such a thing happened <laughs> you understand what i'm saying or maybe all the 10 are dead and gone because it's 20 years dude every single year you are seeing that people are missing you know especially covid situation and so many other uh, illness and ailments and problems uh, you know so many people are dead and gone i have lost so many close uh, relatives and friends in the last couple of years you you i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if you are finding it all the 10 are dead and gone so when all the 10 are dead and gone and the only brother who insulted you is asking for or to forgive uh, forgive him asking you to forgive him so many times in these years and you would not let go because why you love carrying that garbage on your back and you call yourself as a proud christian elder brother deacon some pastors listening to me huh? you have that attitude or some elders 40 years ago i got water baptized but what is your attitude not even at the kindergarten level even kindergarten kids they fight and they get well along with each other you know immediately after few minutes have you noticed the kids that's why jesus said hey if you want the kingdom of heaven to be born in your heart you got to become like these children now and why did jesus say that you watch them right they will be almost wrestling with each other rolling on the mud and all that five minutes later you will see them they will be using the same mud to build some houses and all that and they will go well along with each other and and on uh, minutes later they forget and they move on this is called as the childish attitude you got to be innocent like a dove because dove doesn't know how to grab uh, you know ravens they know how to grab but uh, dove doesn't know and they're very very uh, they're very domestic in nature very sober tender be in, be innocent like dove and uh, these are the uh, characteristic attributes that uh, the holy spirit will instill in you and me when we accept the name of jesus when you have dedicated your life in the name of jesus under the cross when you come submissive when you come in humility the first thing that happens in you is the renewal of mind and the transformation of spirit why because you are no more conformed to the world than the worldly pleasures romans 12 1 and 2 i'm still setting the context because a lot of us are still in the kindergarten standards and i i have to tell all of these the second category of people do you belong there carrying that load of garbage for 20 years some people until death and i know one of my very closest relative the lady is not ready to let go something that happened you know 30 years ago yeah she she is an elder in my family and uh, she knew me even before i was born <laughs> okay very elderly person and uh, even some of the incidents that would have that had happened before i was born and she would not let it go and most of the uh, people in that family are dead uh, very few people are surviving and i would tell them tell her hey at least now you reconcile with these people who have not who have nothing to do with that thing because a person who committed that crime or sin or offended you is dead and gone and the answer i would get is no but it is all the same blood you know <laughs> brothers sisters you will find the some or other lame excuses if you have this attitude of enjoying that garbage would you like licking the toilet come out just can you imagine ah brother it's yucks what are you talking yes it's as good as that it's yucks bunch of yucks put together you are carrying it on yourself and wherever you go people are able to smell that stench have you any have any of you try to opening a graveyard and smelling oh forget it it's not allowed you know it's a crime <laughs> so don't try doing that but i happen to be there once why because in the same cemetery they had to marry bury my grandma uh, sorry grandpa my grandma went first and grandpa was second and uh, i was a what 6 year old boy at that point of time and i saw that uh, they they dug it uh, deep enough like 20 feet and i was able to see the skeleton and all that and even and my grandpa passed away after 15 years and even then also we are not able to stand there i could still feel that uh, or I remember that sm the smell of that stench grandma you're stinking enough yeah perhaps my poor grandma doesn't even have a choice she has to continue lying there but there are so many grandmas and grandpas and fathers and mothers can you imagine that you are walking around 
people with that stench and can you imagine the condition of that family you are bringing that uh, you know aroma of uh, garbage and you call yourself as a christian proud christian this is the problem you know having uh, by no means by no way you, you have uh, the attitude to exhibit the character of god character of christ who are you brother right please don't fool yourselves wasting your time on earth you are just a 70 kg or 80 kg mass moving from one place to other place for 8 years and you're dead and gone what have you achieved tell me or what is your objective what is your mission what is your vision being a christian what is your what is your mission in life tell me i'll tell you what is the mission that god have for you and me we must be the children of light walking in the light walking in the wisdom walking in spirit walking in diligence ephesians chapter 5 and we got to be spiritually very strong being led by the spirit galatians 5 verses 21 sorry 22 and 23 and 1 john chapter 2 the whole chapter you may have to read and what 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 is our objective hey to share the good news to lead people into the kingdom of heaven and to teach them what is righteousness all about most importantly none of this is achievable without that holy name of jesus which holds all credibility there is no reputation in you and me without the name of jesus when you come to the cross for example you have a strife between your brother between yourself and another brother immediately go and take the cross if you have a wooden cross at home just take the wooden cross and put it in between you and the brother you will understand what i'm saying hey before the sacrifice that jesus went through on the cross for you and me forgiving our sins he prayed for us you think that prayer he prayed uh, uh you know forgive them they knew not what they are doing is applicable only for pharisees huh how many of you think oh one day pharisees who insulted him no and the roman soldiers who beat him no he was praying for the only those people how many of you are spiritual idiots to assume that i'll tell you he prayed for you and me why because he knew that 20 sorry 2000 years later you and i would be born and through our sinful deeds uh, we also crucify him we also take part in that parade spitting on his face beating him to death crucifying him nailing him to the cross don't you think so each time you sin each time i sin we do the same thing either we spit or pull him by his beard or strip him naked or and you know kind of host the crown of thorns and and you beat it with a iron rod upon that crown of thorns ensuring that one of the thorns punctures his eyes and he lost one of his eyesight you know only with one eye was traveling all the way one and a half miles carrying that heavy cross ha huh? <laughs> you're all wondering about whom are you talking about you only i'm talking about me only i'm talking right can you imagine if jesus is so sober and tender and compassionate enough to forgive you and me continuing to intercede for you and me forgive them father they knew not what they're doing forgive my brother forgive my sister for she did that without knowing unknowingly use this word unknowingly no to whom we are so so close and intimate and affectionate you know for example your own child commits a crime and the headmaster headmistress calls you and then what do you say unknowingly my child did uh, please please uh, this time excuse no and uh, i will write an apology letter and give i'll ensure that my child doesn't repeat this and that next time they call same thing you will repeat you will never give up on your child because why you love them you will go to any extent even to lay down your life uh, to save your child's life that is the true love as a parent or pa- between a parent and a child a mother and a child or a father and a child and bible says in isaiah 49 uh, verse 14 15 16 16 even if the friends may despise parents may forsake right as the child grows up the love between the parent and child changes and once upon a time they used to love this child but now they hate them it would be better i heard some parents even cursing their children it would be better if you die you are such a headache and nuisance and the child is so mischievous probably he became a rapist or a drug addict or addict or something something like that and they don't want to uh, him to be al- alive anymore you are you are uh, you are such a i mean you are creating such a show uh, you know social stigma and you are familying sorry you are you are spoiling the fame of the family you are defaming our names yeah it's quite possible that the affection you know gets transformed to 
some sort of strife and bitterness. But even that may happen. I, the Lord, will carry you till the end of your age. Until you are grey hair, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. Uh, Hebrews 13, 5 says, and Isaiah 49, 15, 16 says this. And when you put that wooden cross in between yourself and the other person against whom, virtually imagine the other person is right in front of you, whom you hate to death, you have so much of bitterness, envy, grudge. Huh? You're offended, you're defensive, you want to avenge somebody, you want to take revenge on somebody, kill them if you get a chance and not judge by the law. How many of you would be willing to do that? Huh? If, if the government is allowing, I will, we will give you one hour time. Imagine like this. <laughs> Any government. <clears throat> I did not mention the name of the country, right? If they say that we, every year we will give you one hour time to take revenge on someone whom you hate. You want to kill them, kill them. You will not be judged by the law. Go ahead. Which one of you sitting here would not want to do that wholeheartedly? Eh? Don't, don't, don't fool yourself and God. Eh? Be honest to yourself. Which one of you? Some names are already coming in your mind. It's flashing on your mind, isn't it? <laughs> yeah? I know that. I know the truth, what is in your heart. But uh, I'm telling you, which one of you would not want to do that? Best chance. And that to imagine even more. That probably you rank in the top 10 fortune or something like that where the opponent cannot strike you back. That way you are not going to get injured, neither judged by the law. The opponent is handicapped, probably his hands and legs are tied and you want to go and behead them. Go and do anything you want to your enemy. Only you get the privilege, status. And imagine if you qualify in that list. Would you think twice, huh? Huh? Christians, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to unbeliever brother or sister. Forget, forget them. Forget them because they knew not what the truth is. So they, they basically go ahead like that. And it is our duty to be a role model to such people. And you people definitely are. We people definitely are not there yet. Else the whole world would, become, would have become heaven. How many Christians are there? Tell me. Half the population in the world are Christian countries. Correct, no? And why the rest half is full of crime? In fact, the... In fact, the population, Christian population itself is full of crime. Uh, how many people even go to church in Europe? Tell me. Or in a country like US. Um, India is far better. At least there are religious Christians. We are minorities, but still far, far better than some of the Western countries and European countries and all that. Huh? Tell me, brothers, sisters, answer this question. Which one of you would not use that opportunity? Yes, then Christ is living in you. Huh? How can I do that? You are not judged by the law. See, today you don't want to do it. Why? Because you will you will end up in jail and you don't want to spend your time in jail. And that's why ah, I'm not able to take revenge on this guy. Because why? This law is a big blocker. Now, what if the law is eliminated and you get that one hour lenience? To avenge your brother, to avenge your sister or anybody. Your heart doesn't love you. Christ is living in you, brother. Yeah, why? Because you know the value of cross. You know how much it costs for your Jesus to forgive you. And therefore, you got to be role model to exemplify or amplify the love of Christ in you. Christ-like mindset, walking in humility, walking in lowliness of mind, walking in uh, words seasoned with grace. The words of your mouth uh, should replicate the love of Christ. Colossians 4, 6, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3, 4 and 5. I'm quoting from scriptures. Huh? I'm not talking my fairy tales. I'm setting the context. I'm giving you an overall picture of what we are trying to discuss. My time is already up. Yeah, First session is over only in setting the basics. So my brothers and sisters, which category you belong? I, d I just gave you two or three categories. Like, you know, and that is the other category that I could think of is they call themselves as the people who are holy and the rest of them are unholy. Yes, maybe that is the case. But then you call them unholy. Why? Because you are burdened in your heart that they don't belong here and they belong somewhere else. And you are burdened. Right? You are highly concerned of them. That way, yes, if you are calling yourself as holy and others are unholy and you are praying for them and fasting and prayer and this and that. Yes, you are a wonderful brother. You are a wonderful sister. You continue to be like that. But then... If you are categorizing them in such a way that, yes, these are the children of devil. Anybody in there, in the, there in this room calling people, the mankind as children of devil and all that? 
you are the first people you are the, you'll be the first person going to hell because why they are creations of god the bible says that how is that you curse the men and praise god with the same mouth which means what god is not going to be anywhere closer to you bunch of evil spirits will already start to live in you i'm talking about believers curse, cursing unbelievers huh? huh forget about cursing your fellow brethren that is another thing which you cannot do either are you looking down on unbelievers by religion and therefore you have that bitterness and you are not ready to forgive them or accept them <clears throat> see i am not asking you to go and associate yourself with their traditions and culture and worldly pleasures <clears throat> worldly pleasures and all that do not associate yourself with the worldly people right clear but then in your heart are, at least are you not burdened that this brother and that sister unbelievers although they are unbelievers so they are creations of god god created them but it's they who have rejected god and i'm burdened about it i pray for the world i pray for my neighborhood i pray for my neighbor i pray for my city where i live i pray for my fellow citizens i pray for my fellow colleagues i pray for my college mates everyone do you do you pray or for your blood relations and the last category is there are a lot of people even within christendom belonging to certain denominations or congregations or nominal christians where they keep this bible the word of god at a far away distance keep keeping jesus at a far away distance why it's they because they have come to a conclusion already no way we can become like jesus brother you know my own close relative i don't want to name who he is the person told us it is impossible to practice jesus in a world like this where we are living if it was impossible you think god is so stupid to write down something in the bible that you cannot practice and you will fail for sure you think god is a sadist you think god is a liar and not just that you think jesus is someone who is stupid that who came to this world lived by the standards and yet proved that there was no blemish in him he was spotless that lamb without blemish and he died for you and me hebrews 2:17 18 tempted like us at all points 1 peter 1:18 1 peter 3:18 19 1 corinthians 6:9 and 10 which tells very clearly sorry 1 corinthians 6:20 that he purchased us for a price shedding his precious blood uh, with and the blood without blemish purchased us by all human standards he was tempted like even me yet he overcame and therefore you and i are able to look at him as our role model and you and i have every opportunity to live like him march forward like him and be glorious like our lord jesus all right i think that's good enough for setting the context um, this is exactly what we are going to deal in the rest of the sessions so within this episode um, once again i'm getting I'm, i'm getting you reminded that we are discussing about praying for our enemies right in this world there are a lot of people whom we don't like in fact if you ask some people they will have some or other complaints against every one of them whom they know starting from their own wives or husbands and children and boiling down all the way to their blood relations neighbors colleagues college mates yeah everyone and anyone they don't go well with each other you're all surprised and there are few people who will hand pick only two people I, some people pick four people why because when i'm dead no i need four people to carry the coffin <laughs> there are event managements right you give money what they will deploy even 10 people to carry your coffin see don't please please build relationship to carry coffin what kind of attitude is this and rest all i don't need see there again you are selfish your motive is so full of selfish even when you are dead your dead body will have to be carried by four people when you are dead in god does it really matter jesus asked this matthew 6 uh, you take and read what can they do with your dead body jesus asked this in matthew 6 <laughs> so don't build relationship with a selfish motive and uh, therefore don't say that you know i'm so nice to these four people and uh, you are nice to four people because you need them to carry your dead body and coffin and all that yeah, this is exactly what we are going to discuss not about carrying dead bodies huh? come on <laughs> we are going to talk about different aspects and attributes as uh, what can make you better what can make you get there to uh talk through some of or discuss some of the scriptures which can get you to the uh, side of light and you walk in maturity god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this loving uh time and uh, you know we appreciate your kindness that you are teaching us all of these 
uh, these are like very very personal teachings that we enjoy every moment that we get along as a community in fellowship and uh, this episode is pretty much important because without this attitude forgiving others and praying for our enemies and all that there is no way that we would be enter into the kingdom of heaven thank you for helping us to understand this oh lord in jesus name we pray god bless you please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists do not miss on any videos yeah you get notification please make every effort keep it in your watch list or something and watch it later at least do not miss and please share it with your friends relatives near ones whom dear ones whom ever you know um, you know please ensure that don't force on them but then target one soul per day and share these links continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers you are my praying partner we do this ministry together god bless you take care i will meet you soon in the next session bye